is the Writer's Almanac for Wednesday. It's the 13th of April, 2022. It's the birthday of the man who said, In matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. Thomas Jefferson, born in Albemarle County, Virginia, 1743. He wrote the Declaration of Independence. He was this country's minister to France. He was Secretary of State, Vice President, and President. But Thomas Jefferson was also an inventor, a philosopher, a farmer, naturalist, astronomer, a connoisseur of food and wine, and he was a musician. As one of his biographers wrote, he could calculate an eclipse, survey an estate, tie an artery, plan an edifice, try a cause, break a horse, dance a minuet, and play the violin. He was inspired by classic Roman architecture, designed his great estate, Monticello, along classic lines, also the University of Virginia, and a number of buildings in Washington. Jefferson is considered responsible for the neoclassical look of the Capitol. He was a talented astronomer who predicted an eclipse in 1778. He knew physics, anatomy, botany, and geology, and he was a passionate paleontologist. At one point when he was president, he had the East Room of the White House covered with mastodon bones. He was a passionate gardener. He said that he ate meat as a condiment for the vegetables, which constitute my principal diet. In his gardens at Monticello, he grew 330 varieties of vegetables, 170 varieties of fruit. He grew Mexican peppers, beans that had been collected by Lewis and Clark, broccoli from Italy. He loved the English pea. He grew turnips, lettuces, artichokes, tomatoes, eggplants, and squash, and he kept exhaustive notes on them, when they were sown, when they were mulched, which varieties were the tastiest. He had about 5,000 acres of farmland. He did keep slaves to cultivate it. He was dependent on the labor of hundreds of slaves to keep his farms running and spent a large part of his days supervising them. He said, from breakfast or noon to dinner, I am mostly on horseback attending to my farm. And he loved music. Jefferson wrote, If there's a gratification which I envy any people in this world, it is Italy and its music. This is the favorite passion of my soul. He played the violin, sometimes the cello and the harpsichord, and he loved to sing. He walked or rode around Monticello, singing and humming to himself, Thomas Jefferson. And it's the birthday of Eudora Welty, born Jackson, Mississippi, 1909, who wrote several novels, including The Optimist's Daughter, but she's best known for her short stories, which she wrote and rewrote, cutting them apart at her dining room table. You can tour her house and garden in Jackson for $5, the house at 1119 Pinehurst Street. She moved into the house in 1925 with her parents when she was 16, and she lived there until she died in 2001. Here's a poem for today by David Ignato, entitled The Bagel. I stopped to pick up the bagel, rolling away in the wind, annoyed with myself for having dropped it, as if it were a portent. Faster and faster it rolled, with me running after it, bent low, gritting my teeth, and I found myself doubled over and rolling down the street, head over heels, one complete somersault after another, like a bagel, and strangely happy with myself. The Bagel by David Ignato from his collection Against the Evidence, published by Wesleyan University Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.